Yeah, you wanna, uh, do you want to introduce her? I can introduce myself. Well, then you go right ahead. You <laughs> <laughs> I think I'd like to introduce myself to you. Hi. Hi. Lori Wilson. Lisa. Lisa, nice to meet you. Laura. Pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Anything you need, just holler. Okay. I just needed some people to show up, so I'm all set. for coming. Um, you guys probably don't know this, but I'm actually back by popular demand. So that part's really cool. cool. Thank you, Carol. About being bonkers and being a caregiver. I had already authored one other book that was romantic fiction. So that book's really fun, but that was before I had any real problems. So this one's better. Everyone says this one's better because you know this is like the real book about real people. Um, it's called As Nora Jo Fades Away. And the movie here it is safe to say that it's the sequel to this book. She's 25 on this cover, and uh, she, she loved the cover of this book right up to the very end. It was always in her house, and she would walk past him and go, who's that gorgeous gal on the cover of that book? <laughs> and she would choose her every time. Uh, I know all of us big people, we like to read, we grew up reading, and I'm like, how can I reach an 18-year-old right now who's like all busy on the iPhone and the iPad, doing all that other stuff, and I thought, maybe if I make a movie, they will be like, well, that's not a lot of work. I can lay there and text and watch a movie. So that, that was like part of my inspiration for making the movie. Uh, one day I was doing her hair and it was about 4.30 in the afternoon and we did eat a lot of pizzas while we were caregiving. I was, I was an excellent cook of pizza. Um, and uh, I had just set the stove and I'm rolling her hair and uh, she looks at the stove and she goes, it's only 170? Do you think it's too early for a beer? And, uh, <laughs> I looked at my husband and I'm like, I'm sure it's 570 somewhere, girl. Come and gave the woman a beer. Um, this is Pete. I mean, the one person whose life I have willingly, positively, and with heartfelt sincerity made an impression on won't remember any of it. She won't know my name. She won't know my gender. She'll forget how to walk and she'll forget how to talk. So why would she remember me? Theoretically, I get it. But I don't know if it'll stop me from thinking, Nor, it's me. I'm the man. I'm Pete. I'm that guy that cooks for you. You gotta know that much. We've laughed, we've drank, we've danced. I've saved you from a couple of falls and picked you up after a few too. I'm the guy that gives such good hugs. It's me, Nor. It's Pete. But none of that will mean anything to her. And that's the part that really is bullshit. I was, you know, the I am woman, hear me roar, and I volunteered for the job, and I just thought no one else should be doing the job. And then I was really, um, I was on medication, and I was sleep deprived for a whole year, and um, I wasn't managing emotionally very well, and like I said, my the TV had become my new babysitter for my daughter, Hannah Montana. I, I owe Hannah Montana a lot of money right now. <laughs> Thank goodness, I got smart. And I decided, um, thanks to people like Aaron Atkinson and Home Care Generations, I thought I need help and I need professional help in my home if I'm going to like if I'm going to make it out of this alive. So I hired a caregiver, and um, it's great. His company, you you can hire them for one hour a week. You can hire them for 24 hours a day, which is so amazing. And I needed 20 hours, and like I got to nap if I wanted to, which I usually didn't want to do. Um, or go to the gym. That was a huge outlet of mine. I, um, I started running and I started doing a lot of yoga and I literally started working out six days a week. I mean, and for the first year, I don't even know, I don't even remember working out. I just remember feeling like I was a mess. And I had to basically just like figure out how to like lock her into my house. Which she still, she didn't know who I was the last year a lot, but she still trusted me. Like she understood my energy even when we were fighting. And I was going to pick a different excerpt, but Aaron told me this one's his favorite. So we're going to go with this one, Aaron. We're going to go with this one. Um, this is a little poem I wrote um, at the end when I was trying to just en envision like the difference between my life and her life. Uh, Jazz is the name of my daughter, and my grandmother had lost um, her husband of 67 years and my father, our father, who had died of lung cancer uh, less than a year before her husband died of Alzheimer's disease, and she was his caregiver. Let's give you a little bit of insight into the poem. Um, I've lost many freedoms, but I still have my mind. I can't go to a movie on a whim, and I can no longer work full time. A good night's sleep is a thing of the past, and my short-term memories for shit. I lose my cell phone twice as often, and exercise without breaking a sweat. 
My husband and I have lost our bedroom. Jazz, our daughter, has become a permanent figure. Most days are welded together and heavy. I no longer wake up to tomorrow eager. I've lost many freedoms, but still have my mind. As for my gram, it's a race against time. She's lost her two kitchens. That must be hell for a cook. She wanders aimlessly in her new home, no safe place to look. She too can no longer sleep. Her nights are mixed up with her days. And years past swoop down to strangle her, her reality, an inescapable maze. Graham lost her husband five years ago. Her bed is so lonely and so cold. After a lifetime of companionship, the covers to her left lack reason to fold. She lives without a purpose and works hard to break into smile. Uselessness precedes her every move, and getting out of bed takes more than a while. I've lost many freedoms, but still have my mind. But my grandma's losing everything, and all at the same time. It hardly seems fair to me that a woman who is so beautiful didn't end up with a better angel to protect her from this private hell. I'm no saint and I'm no savior, and I can't raise a dead son from his grave. All I got is this idea that she's my family to support and save. And this plan I have has failed before, and I'm certain this is no new show, but I know my spirit will prevail, for it came from a place called Lauren Joe. Thank you.